Well, it's dirty and it's brown, it's a little in town. Like I just got it out of the middle of town. Trying to test it, drum infested. Stained by food, partially digested. Nobody can say what you find between the dirty couch gushes that have never been clean. Missing keys or American cheese. Trying to sit where the kiss will see. Pleasure to meet ya, we're happy to see ya. In the nasty food Jillian, can you give me a 10 count? Just count to 10. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. A little less treble. Oh, wait. That's mic two, isn't it? That's mic. I mean, not all the treble out, but a little less treble. Check. Check one, two. Mm-hmm. Check, check. Mm-hmm. Checking one, two. I mean, I have a problem with live sound mixing. <laughs> That's All right, okay. so let's try this again. Mic check. Check one, two. One, two. Check one, two. Check, check, one, two. Yeah. Nice. On point. Like you do this. Like this is your yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, Jillian, welcome to the Dusty Futon. Hi. Glad uh, to be here. Yes, glad Sorry. to have you. We Actually, don't clean it. And uh, co-host for the day is Timmy D. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, po- I bet you. Oh, you're talking to her. Jillian. Oh, me. Okay. I know I wasn't looking at her, but that's <laughs> that's in radio. You don't always have to make eye contact. It's, gotcha. But yeah, I, but this is this is podcast, not radio. Oh, right. Should, Sorry. Should so we have in, code names? So, yeah. <clears throat> we so should I know have when you're speaking signals. to me? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's good. I'll just say pork and beans before anything that I refer okay. to John with. Gotcha. And then with you, your cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> I like cilantro. It's I good. love cilantro. It's great. It's a little definitely. bit of that on top of some. I mean, uh, the, my like style of music is very Frank cilantro. So yeah, that's Frank awesome. cilantro. I yeah, like a little that. Bit of I like that. That was that was. That's that's my code name. Okay, Frank like cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> now you you uh, you are a jazz singer. Yeah. And you've been on the scene for eight years, performing, yes. recording, and all sorts of stuff. All sorts. And how old are you? Twenty two. My God. <laughs> You are a baby, and yet yeah. you've been performing longer than most people that are currently active in the scene. True. That's how did you get into this? Like, how did you you started at fourteen? Obviously, calculating that. Yeah. Um. Well, I was going to high school, and all my friends started getting jobs. And one of my friends got a job at this Italian restaurant, and they knew that I was a singer and that I started writing music. And they said, "Hey." come sing at this Italian restaurant. And I was like, okay. And he said, but you need to play for three hours straight. Wow. And so I played the same 10 songs over (laughs) and over and over again. And everyone loved it. And I made over a hundred dollars in tips on my first night ever. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so the fever bit you right away. Oh yeah. Oh, it it bit me hard. So do you, you write a lot of your own songs. Yes. Your lyricist as well as a musician. So yeah, did you kind of from that moment forward start like going to school for school for music? Did you start learning more? Or? Um, no, you know, I started um, training vocally when I was six years old with Norm Boaz up in Marietta. So, mm-hmm. um, so well, we actually all lived in San Diego at that time when I started taking vocal lessons. But then we all moved up to Temecula together, like at the same time, like not like together, but. Um, <laughs> what a not jewel! To, not together. <laughs> yeah. Is she a sweetheart? Sweet. No, I meant Temecula. Is oh, a beautiful oh. city. But yeah, you're sweet it is too. A, yeah. The jewel of the valley. That's what mm-hmm. they call it. Yeah. What are the odds? They really call it that. <laughs> Something like it that. is. Why would yeah. they? I like Temecula. You ever been there? The only a thing wine cool about country is beautiful. That's about the only thing cool yeah. about Temecula is they've got a minor league baseball team and they've got Lake right. Elsinore that's Lake Elsinore Storm. They've yeah. got the Lake Elsinore Storm, which is. Have you ever been to a baseball game there? Oh, I used to sing the anthem. Oh, at, my God. At they have stadium. an anthem? Yeah, uh, the national The national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, how does that go? America. Very thunderous. <laughs> what? Okay, so how'd you land that gig? Um, I auditioned when I was eight years old, and then I sang it every week. Like, for an entire season, they had just me singing the anthem. Wow, every yeah. game. Every, well, it was like. Every home game. Yeah, yeah. Because it it's like, only the home game. It was like two or three days a week, though. It was wow. crazy. Yeah. So you've just been singing since you were... All the time, yeah. So, what, okay, t- 14, you were singing, you were writing. That's when your career really started. Yeah. Take me before that. What what led up to that moment? Like, what, were you around a family of nothing but singers? 
How's your like? Did Actually, there are no other singers in my family. Um, but we're all very musical. Actually, everybody in my family can read sheet music and play piano, and I'm the only one that doesn't read music. Wait, you don't read music? No, I play piano, but I, I play by theory. I don't I don't read sheet music at all. You know what they call that, John? Genius. Oh, I was gonna say talent, but sure, yeah, we'll go to genius. <laughs> genius talent. How about yeah. that? Let's put them together. Genius talent. You're genius amazing. Talent. Yeah. Oh my god. My head is getting so large right now. It should. We've got a big room for it to fill in. So cool. yeah, it's cool. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and um you're gonna play live for us, which yeah. is something we normally don't do on the Dusty Futon. We actually we started season three um with my band, Paradox at the time, which were on a hiatus, kind of performing a really horrible version of our song. Uh, live, and I'm sure that you are going to put that to shame. Um, Here you go. I'm, yeah. So let's. Here we uh, go. Give us, give us a little intro. So is this? Um, yeah. Which song are you going to play? So I'm going to play um, a song that I wrote last year, and it's called "All You Needed Was Me." Here it goes. of love to her while I softly cry so I turn to another's words cause you couldn't look me in the eyes and who is she to tell me that she is ready for this ride with her own lover by her side it was all a lie and love you don't know to do with yourself and love all you needed was somebody's help and I was too blind to see that all you really needed was me It's still like I, I, turning away. It sounded like Nora Jones. Thank you. And I know that's one Appreciate of your that. your influences. Yeah, big one for sure. Obviously, <laughs> you're stunned, but you look like you want to say something at the same time. I know exactly who she sounds like because I used to play the Third Street Promenade next to this girl named Chelsea Williams. Do you know who she is? I, I think, think it's Williams. Her. She has a song called Eight Days Straight." You have her same inflections. It's gorgeous. Ooh. She got signed with. Um, 
I think it was Atlantic. She got discovered at the promenade because everybody just loved that, just how she'd croon some cool. of her words. That, Very unique. Yeah. It, it, you're, yes. And what's interesting is it doesn't look like that style of a voice would come out of you. Yep. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. And and it's so developed and it's so mature, especially oh, you. for your age. It's incredible. I'm blown away. Now, that's thank off you so of, much. That's off of your new EP that's coming new out. New EP, yes. Yeah, so that'll be a five-song EP with some songs that are my original songs and then some songs I'm actually, actually collaborating with um, a writer from L.A. Her name is Bethany Rubin. She's actually um, a part of the group Bicken Hall, which is um, the covers I see you've got. Pulled yes. up there. I'm getting ready yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we're collaborating, doing some co-writes, and those will go on the album. We're working with um, Bill Leffler, a producer in LA. So, wow. Yeah, we record up in Koreatown. It's pretty cool. Ooh, that's <laughs> awesome. Now, yeah. and, and you've recorded. You actually, she's been on a lot of different albums. You've been, um, well, obviously with the Brickingham, and you've been yeah. with a couple. You've recorded with a couple of other people. Um, I have. Yeah, um, I'm a part of this nonprofit organization called the Girls Against Abuse. That's what it was, yes. Yeah, yeah. so I worked with them uh, starting when I was 14 years old, yeah. That's the jam. You ever uh, you ever check out uh, Postmodern Jukebox? <gasps> Love them. Yeah, okay. me too. One of their singers, Haley Reinhardt, is mm. like my idol. She has got this smoky voice with mm. that growl. Oh. She's <laughs> the one that does the, uh, the main lead-in vocal for All About That Bass. Really? Yeah, oh. is yes. Okay. Is that who I'm thinking I of? I think so. Uh, She's got like the long curly hair, like super curly hair. Am I thinking uh, on their Christmas album? She does the main vocals for Last Christmas, I think too. I, you know, okay, I okay, know okay. who you're talking about, but yes, I mean yes, that yes. girl once again. The word croon, the way that yep. they handle their words, they they kind of present them in just kind of a sideways manner. And I think one of the great things is you got a great start. A great often running attitude behind what you're doing and it's one of those things where john i know you know this man we've talked about this is <laughs> i got a beer in your, my hand sorry i'm just chilling well yeah no but i mean <laughs> being one of those kind of people that, that where you you have certain influences where of course you're going to sound like them you love yeah. Laura jones you yeah. love this person that person but i mean one of the things is, is when you when you're okay with sounding like that person mm -hmm. and then bring it across the way that you feel it you know, yeah. and that is something that a lot of people they they really forget to yeah. Just I see let what, it happen. what what you're saying is like I heard Nora Jones, but that's not what I thought was playing. You know, like, yeah. Like I heard Nora Jones esque, but it wasn't Nora Jones, and that's what's yeah. beautiful about like, cool. exactly what he's saying. You take the styles, the the influences of yours, and you've mm -hmm. molded it into your own voice. Mm -hmm. And and man, you so you wrote the chords and the lyrics, yeah, for that song, yeah. So tell me where that came from, because there's always an inspiration behind a love oh, song yeah. like that. That was the first song that I wrote after um, after a four year relationship where I was married, two kids. I got married when I was 19, so uh, that ended pretty badly. And uh, that explains the maturity now. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I sing the blues because I felt the blues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Heartache's yeah. a good ingredient in oh, the yeah. songwriting. You just, you know, it's it like is. paprika, you know, yes. or paprika if you're Hungarian. You know, a li little too much might be Hungarian. overkill. <laughs> Hungarian, yeah, it's a small, uh, Hungary is a small country. In, I'm familiar uh, with that. I didn't know paprika was from Hungary. <laughs> well, it's from a few <laughs> different places, but they use a lot in uh, Hungary. I, paprika I, is I a Hungarian dish. Paprika when I'm hungry. You only eat paprika? You're No, I put them on top of my deviled eggs. Oh, love deviled eggs. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> not not you know, it's so funny. Sweet irony, deviled eggs are at all these parties I go to. It's great party food, but it's really not because it makes your breath smell like deviled eggs. And <laughs> well, it depends on what you put in it, because some people it's like true. the egg smell. I don't know. But if you put the relish in it Yeah, like Oscar the Grouch. Uh, what? Uh, no. No. He likes the egg smell. Methane sniffers. Yeah, you know all that stuff. No, Back not into to that. You, Jill. Never yeah. heard of that. Wait, wait, wait. So we were talking about there was <laughs> there's a like lot eggs. of there's a lot of heartache. There's a lot of you invested. This is what's so cool, though, as you a gotta songwriter. You got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's see what there I did there. So yeah, I did no, I like that. That's yes. uh, what is that? Uh, some sort of a like a, an analogy, a metaphor, or something. Metaphorical right. subway. Segway. Right. Subway. subway. A metaphorical <laughs> subway. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, uh, I'll just, <laughs> but I will say, like, I'm a songwriter. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I produce. I, you know, hearing how other people you know, grab the inspiration. I mean, 
Yeah. How many times some of my best tunes have come out of the highlights and lowlights of Mm -hmm. my life? Never in between. It's like that's when you get those just those strong moves of emotion in your body. And it's just Mm -hmm. it's almost like a gift. It just comes right out. And you're like, yeah, that was easy. Next. (laughs) Yep. And I've never (laughs) felt so much joy after feeling so much heartache. It's like the highs are now higher. Of course. And they call that manic. Well, yeah. <laughs> or life. Yes. Slightly bipolar. Life. Bipolar, yeah. Well, oh, you know what? No. I think every musician, has, every good songwriter has to be bipolar. Absolutely. Because you really have to have that 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 manic feeling of yes. both the highs and the lows of like, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to die. Or, oh my God, it's the best experience ever. That's me. <laughs> yeah. But you, gotta, you also have to learn to live in those moments too oh, and yeah. really ingest what's going yep. on. And that's a tough thing to do. That's why you... that's why I edit because I don't live in the moment. I wait until everything's done and mm-hmm. then I be, if you ask me when we're done with this, mm-hmm. what what I said 20 minutes ago, I wouldn't remember until I edited it. Gotcha. I have a bad memory. <laughs> um now okay, you've been What born... was your name again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she was about to take it seriously. She's like, yeah, "Wait, what? Like, no, my name's Jillian." Yeah. It's Jillian. It's Jillian Culkin. Culkin. Yeah. Is Cal- that Calkins. is it pluralized? Yes. Because there's many of us. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. It looks like there's only one of you. That must well, be I mean, that bipolar writing thing <laughs> yes. going on. Well, multiple the, personalities. I was yes, going to go exactly. with like, like that new movie with planes uh, and of oh, existence. Oh, yeah, Split. Oh, yeah, Split. Never saying that. It looks scary. Yeah. I don't know that one. It's uh, James McAvoy. Yeah. That's scary already. Yeah. Oh, wow. That smile. Just <laughs> creepy. <laughs> no, you know what is... It's really that, I mean, that's Instead a of beating a dead horse, let's move on. Let's move on the subject. <laughs> yeah, no, I, but it's, as a songwriter, it's really crazy to feel that weight, you know? Yeah. You can't have the bitter without the sweet and vice versa. There you go. It makes I, a good pastry. Yeah, now, so, so we're, we're playing around with names for, for this new EP. and mm. um, I was about to ask you about that. Yeah. You, you kind of so got a little sidetracked. There's, I like, there's nothing That's official, what I do. I like getting sidetracked. You, you go, go ahead and talk about your EP. I'm just going to pull you away from it. Yeah. So we're playing around with some names, and um, I was thinking because it's going to start with this song, with that song that I just played you, and it's pretty dark. All you need And um, me. the production sounds very uh, Radiohead, mm. Lana Del Rey kind of. Okay. Oh, very much. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh. So the production on it is very cool, um, but it starts at a very you know dark place. But we're going to bring it up, and I'm thinking about calling it Heartbreak to Hope. Ooh. The song because or the album? The album. Okay. Yeah, the because EP. every every Standard other play. song aside from this one has a silver lining, has like the new love, has like the new hope. and I like that kind of yeah. an EP design rather than an album design. So it's yeah, actually yeah, going to yeah. have a fluid. Just a glimpse. The whole yep. thing. Exactly. Are you going to develop this into a full length album eventually? Eventually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you've already um, you've already been awarded uh, or been nominated for a bunch of awards. Oh yeah. At twenty two, yeah. yeah, you've been nominated. What awards have you been nominated for? Um, song of the year. So I won song of the month. Um, actually in the folk genre, I wrote. Um, it was the title track of my last album. It was um, always come back to me, mm-hmm. and um, that one got nominated for song of the year. I think it was maybe back in two thousand ten, but. Uh, <laughs> Was, wait, yeah, wait, so wait, wait, I was even that, even younger. Yeah, is that San Diego Music or is that Oh Hollywood Music and Media Awards? Oh, yeah, HMMA. Yeah, yes, the big stuff. HMMA, mm-hmm. the good stuff. Yeah, she's legit. This I don't know. I, this is actually a legit <laughs> artist on the Dusty Food mm-hmm. for once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you go yeah, to their? Uh, <laughs> did you go to that red carpet? I did. Yeah, and that's where. Oh, we were listening to, we were listening to the Pointer Sisters in the car together and I said oh my gosh I met them on a red carpet and I met the Pointer Sisters and I met Smokey Robinson there oh, wow. I, I met like a ton of people it was the most amazing experience that's the experience. beauty of the industry though is the oh, yeah. randomness of meeting people yeah. you're like what you're well, yeah it's amazing what you the, the connections you have up yeah. there especially when you get to these award ceremonies so you've won a few awards already god I still I can't get over that yeah. how uh, amazingly yeah. mature your voice sounds your style yeah. sounds your writing um and you're only 22. I'm an old soul. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely you can hear it in your voice for sure. Thanks. But speaking of, let's hear another one of your tracks. Yeah. From okay. Your new EP. Um, so this one is called Daydream. I have no words. 
to tell you how I feel. I need no words. You know what's in my head. How strange it is when someone. Truly understands. I know your thoughts as I read the books you've read, and you make my soul take flight, transcending. Through visions of light, impatiently waiting for the day you become my daydream. For fear that you disappear. Flying in my mind, your words are true and kind. Your spirit lingers in this space, in places that remind me of what's behind us. Is the proof that we are ever moving forward, and you make my soul take flight. Transcending through visions of light, impatiently waiting for the day you become a daydream for fear that you'll disappear. Jam. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. There's so much melancholy in the... Yeah, but it, it's still... It, it's like, the gray skies with the silver lining, like she said. Yeah, I was about to say, it's not, just like you So described. that's one of my transition songs. That's the beauty into, of it, though. Uh, yeah. That is very Tom York of you, though, from... Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Radiohead. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Radiohead. No, but it is. He was really good, I mean, even from the get-go with Creep. I mean, mm -hmm. it's so melancholy. He's yeah. like talking about this dream and then all of a sudden he's like but what have i got i'm a i'm a creep and and the way that you say yeah. it, this pain that you retain man i love like even though we were talking about that earlier about uh you know a lot of guys don't listen to the lyrics a lot of girls listen to the lyrics and but the melody kind mm -hmm. of is the common ground of mm -hmm. it's good melody guys pay attention good melody girls pay attention but the, <laughs> yes. you, but i'm serious yes. and it's something though this as a songwriter accurate. you have to pay attention to the lyrics they really have mm -hmm. to ring true and big john i know you're the radio man but coming from this side of the department this is the songwriting department over here i just got to tell you from a listener uh and that's pretty much what i bring is the listener perspective I, I, i'm entranced um Thank you. like from the moment you start playing your 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 playing ability is incredible too and that's i am a singer songwriter myself um, what yeah i know what? right no way <laughs> it sucks but it's okay i mean it's out there somewhere uh, it sucks that you're a singer songwriter or? no my singer songwriter ability sucks so sir do not be self-deprecating i i but believe in you 100 percent. well anyway that's not the point we're here for jillian today we'll talk about me later <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> Jillian, promise. let's get back to you and how so, awesome you are. The, the ability, just no, I know for a personal experience, I've actually performed, the ability to play a guitar and sing at the same time is, yeah. is, is strenuous in itself. When did you start doing both of those, like playing the guitar and singing at the same time? Um, I actually, so um, I, I started playing guitar around 13, 14 years old. So when I started playing in restaurants, I would just sit down behind a grand piano and just 
pluck it out on the piano. So mm-hmm. I knew I knew chords. I knew, you know, so I had these little jazzy chords and I knew like five songs and then I had written five songs on the piano. So I was set kind of. It's all you need. Yeah. So how did you, you just naturally transfer that to the guitar because of yes. your music theory knowledge? Yeah. I just, I picked up a guitar. I said, this is easier to carry. Yeah, and <laughs> it is. I have a question. Never turn back. With your music theory, did you mm-hmm. actually study music theory or does it just exist in your head and you hear it? You know what? It exists in my head, but there I've also, go. I've also worked with like guitar mentors and things like that, that they're, they're like, you need to know exactly what you're playing. So now if someone shouts out a D minor seven flat five, I know that's, you know, right mm-hmm. here. But that came after. It came the, much after. Yes. Yeah. I, I had the, that, that you had the instinct of, of being able to feel it. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. how it came naturally to you. But once you, oh, yeah. I feel the same way. It's it's like, uh, I, I look at it kind of a conceptual knowledge. Like you mm-hmm. get the concept, you know, you understand the feelings, you understand the emotions behind it, but then you need the details, the specifics on how to connect the dots in yes. your head yeah. to how you're actually playing. Mm-hmm. And, and once you make that, it just opens like this huge doorway of, holy crap, I didn't know that room existed. Yes. And then the, then now it's your your playground. And exactly. That's where my keys went. <laughs> yes. I've been looking for those. <laughs> I noticed that in a lot of songwriters that are ahead of what they are is it's they don't worry about the the how and the why. It mm-hmm. just exists. That's I don't know how to read sheet music. Mm-hmm. I don't know theory from right to left hand. Well, now I do, but I mean when I started yep. saying th- it was just you just get it. You sit down mm-hmm. at the piano, you hear what sounds and and what and I can't explain it, but a lot of songwriters yeah that's how they form they they just they grasp the concept it's very that's how i started writing because if i started writing poetry in high school Mm. and that that kind of was my thing and i'm like well this shit rhymes and everybody else thinks stuff that rhymes maybe i should make songs too and i was a drummer though so (laughs) carrying drums and writing so actually writing songs to drums in and of itself is very difficult yeah so unless you do hip-hop that's drum machines. Ish. 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 But anyway, I digress. Um, the point is it's it's amazing again. And, and I know you're you're we're just yeah. filling your head full of stuff, but you yeah. you're well deserving of this stuff at oh, your age you. and, and your your humility in receiving it as well. And one thing I noticed when you're singing, I know I'm jumping around like crazy. I'm not giving you a chance That's to talk. I'm liking this. This okay. sparks flying everywhere. Oh, <laughs> you're an incredibly meek person to meet and talk to like you're very yes. meek very reserved very uh quiet but when you open your your mouth to sing there's this projection of confidence of of um like you understand mm-hmm. the world at that very moment it's how did you develop that um that's the old soul inside of me and that's how i communicate with people is singing uh, i don't have a very um authoritative speaking voice i'm actually you know kind of like apprehensive about public speaking and things like that but you give me a guitar and i can sing to thousands of people no problem that's just how my soul communicates so you've always been kind of just singing always yeah since you were a little baby yeah <laughs> yeah that's incredible so um, the other album always come back to me is that's mm-hmm. that's a full length album that you came out with. Yeah. yeah. What, when did that come out? Um, that came out when I was okay. So I had okay my first small EP. It was uh, five songs and it was called Five Blue Fish. So those were my original songs. I wrote about you know my best friends in high school. I wrote a song with with my buddy Josh Pudliner, and it was like the cutest song, and we would like push each other around in shopping carts and, you know, things like that. Um, but but then it evolved, and, and I made this uh, five-song folk EP, and then I made five more songs that were more pop. And now I've completely done a 180 and just settled into jazz as my, as my home right here. It suits here. you. Yeah. yeah, great. It, jazz Thank flows you. through you. It's it he, the blues, the jazz. Like I can, I can just see it. And <laughs> have you? Um, let's see. I met you. I don't know if I talked about this on in this episode yet, but I met you through a, a mutual friend, uh, J Seven. Yeah. J Seven Productions. She's a, a a funny one. I'll get you. You'll meet her soon, Tim. I can't she's, wait. She's she, magical. She is incredibly magical. Very very like amazing. magical. Like believes in fairies. Like, magical like a or really? Oh, no, like she a, is a unicorn. She is oh, really? A unicorn. Yes. Like, I met gonna her. Gonna live forever. 
Yeah. Jillian was at a, a party that mm-hmm. was called an unbirthday party. If that tells you anything. Well, I wear this around my neck yep. for that reason. It says we're all mad here. <laughs> Mm, yeah. I love Wonderland. You'll you'll love her. You'll absolutely love J Seven. But anyway, I met you at her unbirthday party, yeah. and uh, again, it was the same thing as just it is now. I'm, I'm just as entranced at that mm-hmm. moment as as I am now with with your your voice, everything about you as a performer, as a person. You just I, I see you going in so many places, and I'm I'm yeah. happy to be able to talk to you. This is incredible. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's so nice. Sorry, I can't. I can't. No, it's okay. I'm, I'll let you swoon, I'm and I'm so, gonna sit here, I'm and I'm so gonna, I'm gonna break just, you apart like the songwriter I am, nice. and be like, all right, listen, seriously, yeah. too I much G, <laughs> too much G, a little too much E, but we can sit in that F minor sharp thing that you're doing if you think that's a chord. <laughs> no, this is great. I think Thanks. that being hungry, being humble, is keys to success, but not being, you know, step outside your box. Mm-hmm. And really get uncomfortable every once in a while. See, you know, what it's like. And I think that's what's so cool. Saying that you do, you know, pop, jazz, folk. That's, I mean, that's a recipe for somebody who knows how to stretch that muscle. Not, you know, don't be a sprinter who only sprints. You know, try running long distance. Maybe jump in the pool. That's a metaphor, John. (laughs) Well, when you when you wrote those different songs, when you tried those different, like how did how did that come out of you? Was it natural that it just those styles came out of you, or did you want to make them those way? Um, it was sort of just uh, the 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 beginner aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when I first started writing, um, with my old producer Jason Bronner, um. All I knew how to play on the guitar was C, G, A minor, and F. And he was like, so we're just going to write country music? Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. I was going to say. I was like, we're right there. Yeah. That's easy so street. That's, that's kind of my very first album sounds kind of country because huh. that's all I knew how to play. That's all. I mean, the melodies were so easy to, you know, put over C, G, A minor, and F. Mm-hmm. So uh, I it was just as my musical experience has broadened that's that's sort of where i fell in love with jazz because there are so many options i mean when you're stuck in like say i'm playing folk and i'm i'm stuck in like you know playing these f major chords and you know whatever it's it's limiting uh, yeah. because but with jazz there you can make it sound however you want to it can sound melancholy it can sound happy it can sound excited mm-hmm. that's why i love jazz <laughs> you just exploded for the first time i know and that's <laughs> why she loves jazz ladies and why gentlemen I love jazz. that's great <laughs> now i, I sing it I, from the hilltop i gotta ask you because there is one there's an argument in jazz that's been going on about a term that i heard you say before we actually got on the mic smooth jazz Oh, okay, okay. Are you, do you consider... <laughs> the quiet rain. Do you consider yourself smooth jazz? Um, if you see me live, I play smooth jazz. Okay. But when I'm recording, I don't like to call it smooth jazz because it doesn't sound like smooth jazz because I, I, I like to add so much to it. Like I like to add drums and sexy bass solos and things like that when I'm in the studio. So, uh, so... My EP won't be smooth jazz, but if you see me playing live, I just, I'll just. Just kind of flow and relax. Yes. I like how she finger picks her guitar. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you. It's, I mean, it's not, I mean, every style, there's something that's unique to it, but it's like, okay, well, you're playing with that style. So it's very, you know, indicative of what the style you're playing, mm-hmm. but you really, uh, you have a good grasp on that. And that's Thanks. really cool to watch. I was watching your fingers when you were playing that last time. I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's something that I still struggle with on a, well, not a daily basis, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm good with my fingers on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'm very yeah. dexterous. Anyways, no, I mean, it's really, okay, first of all, smooth jazz sounds like a, like a, like how you describe your your pickup line. Well, I'm going to give her some of that smooth jazz. And then go, <laughs> well, no. and that's the thing is smooth jazz. I don't know if you're familiar with this. There's been a debate on smooth jazz on what to, whether it's jazz or not by right. quote ah. unquote jazz connoisseurs. Gotcha. So what are you, Kenny G or Michael Bolton? <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. That's yeah. really where there the, it is. Yeah. Kenny G is really jazz. Mind, Michael right? Bolton is. Uh, yeah. Michael uh, Bolton brings the love. Okay. You see what yes. I'm saying? There's been yes, that, yes, that yes. argument's been around forever. So you're you're on the side where you're truly a jazz musician, mm-hmm. but you actually have the balls to call yourself smooth jazz. I like that. 
Yeah, I mean that's that's what it feels like. Yeah. So I've always thought that too. I don't see the and I don't see... and I love you know crooning out you know the classics when I'm when I'm singing. I'll I'll sing summertime, stormy weather, you know, mm. all those. Ooh. And so I'm definitely smooth jazz. As much as I'd love to hear a cover right now, <laughs> I know the copyright people would just destroy mm. me mm. on a podcast. So, um, Sm- but I mean, that's the other thing though. It's uh, just one more <laughs> thing on the smooth jazz Do it. take is it is whatever it is that, I mean, how you get classified mm-hmm. is not what you are. And we are talking about yeah. this on another podcast. Music is genreless. It really is because you'd be surprised. It's whatever you with want just, it to be. When you there's okay, Selena Gomez came out with a song called "Can't Keep My Hands to Myself." Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. there's a great cover of it by the Kings of Leon where mm-hmm. you're just. I was baffled when I saw this. I said, "Wow, that is," and the song takes on a whole new meaning. It cool. takes on a whole new life. So you know, being smooth jazz, and then transcending that, like maybe you might have somebody who. The, I mean, the ultimate Johnny Cash covering Nine Inch Nails. Oh, oh my God! Oh, I love Trent Reznor that was just was... shitting himself when he got that. Request. That's the ultimate. Yes. I mean, he yes. wrote a great yes. song, did a great version of his own tune, and then mm-hmm. Johnny Cash goes, "Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna sing it my way." That's my best Johnny Cash impersonation. And pretty good. And not bad. <laughs> just it, essentially, to me, that was it. Became Johnny Cash's tune. Yeah. You know. The way that he he really embodied, you really feel a lot of that pain in that song when yes. he sings yeah. it. Like, holy mackerel, he's been through a lot. Yeah. But that's why I say it's you when you write these pop tunes or those cute little, you know, the five fish that you or was mm-hmm. seven or five, five. Okay, it's five <laughs> fish. You had fishy, goldy, and uh, bluey because it was, was five thing. songs. All of our EPs yes. have been five songs. Yeah. Well, I mean, generally, I mean, you focused and, on the fish. That's no, I mean, focus. generally an EP is five songs. Yeah. It's a rarity. You though, focused like on the fish. Seven. I did focus on the fish. Yeah. I want to know more about this. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward pause. This, this is good this, podcasting this. there, John. Way to go. <laughs> me Jillian, without you. You know, I know. It could, oh, okay. <laughs> me without you. I know it could sound like I'm being uh, in no way condescending, but in, in a way, it's just, it's more of, I definitely, and John, you know this, man, is you being, you sit behind your guitar and you blast out like mm-hmm. the angels of music are just kind of tickling tickling the air with what you're doing and that is <laughs> i'm just i like to challenge i really like nice to challenge people. This there, when yeah. you get john yeah. someday i'd love to have you come up in the studio and just see me work with somebody and it, i like challenging you i like making yeah. you think about things i think he's going to try to snatch you up and take you up to i'm North not Bell, because North you Hollywood. No, you already have a producer i live no, no, in no, north just, hollywood though just to work just to work with you oh i'd maybe, love maybe to maybe you on a track absolutely i have actually a track she as soon as is I heard a collaborator voice. that's what she I does am. fun oh yeah that I, is she's been the dude yeah. seriously let me, let me tell you something. i did a google search for jillian calkins Mm-hmm. And it said there were all these artists that's a track featuring Jillian Calkins, yep. featuring. Jill- I'm like, are you kidding me? And I click on them, and it was all her voice. Yeah. So these other, so dude, you, take her. Honestly, <laughs> well, I mean, yes, you know, borrow. I'm, her. I'm up for grabs. There you go. In this industry, and I wish I could say even more that I had more opportunities. Mm-hmm. A female voice is something that is sought after, especially when it carries some weight yeah. and mm-hmm. has a little leverage behind it. Yeah. Uh, Maybe not the name yet, but that'll yet. be there. And I think it is, you know, but that's, it's, it really is. A, you carry a lot of weight in your voice. It's a great thing. And a, the, as soon as you open your I think mouth with the first <laughs> note, personal that's why opinion. I thought Chelsea Williams, because you, I asked her oh. to, when she was playing next to me, yeah. I was like, will you please be on one of my songs? <laughs> yeah. <Please." laughs> Because she has that. Uh, you, we're going to look her up. I'm going to have you listen to her after the yes. podcast because uh, you'll be like, oh, my goodness. And she has that kind of smooth jazz. I don't know where she is now, but I like her. That's good. Yeah, she's a badass chick. Like I said, yeah. that's why I wanted to get her on no, this I'm, episode. Cause <laughs> thanks voice, for talking with that unicorn. Yeah, or exactly. whoever. Well, yeah. Gave him the, yeah. the seven coins and then brought her. Mm-hmm. J7. Oh, right. That's and where you got the seven from. Seven coins Not with the, the unicorn. Fishies. Jeez. Not the five fishies. No, I I named three of those fishies right. I know yes. I did. Yes, yes. You, you indeed. Yeah, did. very. Um, you know, well, for an imaginative songwriter, your naming is not very imaginative. You're the one that named them. 
No, I read her mind. So do you go by Jillian or do you go by Jillian Calkins? Uh, I go by Jillian. So my, my CDs now, it'll just say Jillian printed on it. I was going to suggest that if you didn't already do that. Cause oh, good, good suggestion. Yeah, because it. it can be so much smoother to slide in with just with Jillian. And then yes. what, if, that gets, if that gets set to where Jillian is you, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Yeah. Next Madonna. Sorry. Yeah. Jillian. Or maybe not Madonna, But if it doesn't work, but put, put a Madonna. dash in between. You just be Jill Leon. Yes, like between the L's. That's very hipster of you. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I thought it'd be confusing if she left two L's together because our Spanish-speaking friends would just be like, gee. <laughs> 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 yeah, like La Jolla turns into a Y. You're fired. Okay, so. <laughs> you love me. Yeah, I do. Uh, tell me, tell me more about this Bick and Hall track, "Me Without You." When, how old were you when you did that? Oh, "Me Without You." So, "Me Without You." I was probably nineteen, maybe twenty years old. Okay. And um, "Me Without You" is actually a children's book. Yeah. And um, we adapted it to a song. Well, Bethany and her team of writers did, and they hired me to sing it. And so we did a version of it in English, and we did a version of it in French as well. I don't know which version I accidentally downloaded, but let's see. If it's French, I'm just going to let it play. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> That's okay. Me without you, yeah, it's not moi sans toi. What's like the sky without blue? A cow with no moo? A hello without a how are you? What's like a ghost with no boo? A cat with no mew? An Eskimo without an igloo? Well, do you know? Here's a clue. It's not a what. It's a who. That's so awesome. It's so crazy because songs like that echo on an eternity with mm-hmm. uh, just all all crowds. And generally... Yeah, it's timeless. Yeah, it's very yeah. timeless. You know, I like to call it the boxcar bandit syndrome where it's like some guy with a guitar sitting in a boxcar in a train somewhere from the 20s. You wouldn't have been able to tell the difference of when that was written mm-hmm. now or then. And Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It transcends. A little kid would love that tune, and an old married mm-hmm. couple would love to walk. That's hand a in very hand. good analogy you just came up with there. Yeah, I like it. I'm proud yeah. of you, yeah. Timmy D. It's, you know, I get one every. Uh, well, actually, Millennium. I'm just full of them. I I have really? tons of it. Yeah, information out the wazoo. Dude, Listen. you got to bring it out more often. I have no <laughs> idea what you. I didn't know you knew anything. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I like to hide it. <laughs> I like to keep it <laughs> hidden. Yeah. You know, all the gems are always hidden somewhere. <laughs> you least expect. Like in San sure. Diego, mm-hmm. like the gem right in front of us, Jillian. My God, you Thanks. are truly a gem. And Thank you, you. I mean, eight years performing, you've already got won a couple of awards. You've been nominated for tons of awards. Mm-hmm. You need more. You need more exposure. I know you do because you are just about to explode. I can tell. Thanks. Like fingers on the pulse here with this young lady. And um, you said you're gonna you want to play one more track yes. from your new EP that's coming out. In five days, or no, sorry, that's five songs coming out. When is it coming out again? Um, most likely this summer, this okay. fall. And the name then. of it, you've deci- haven't decided. I haven't decided, but the idea of it will be "Heartbreak to Hope." Okay. That's a long EP name, I know. or as I like to call them, Eeps. It confuses <laughs> people though, so don't put the EP on the album. Just put the name of it. Gotcha. <laughs> well, let's go out with uh, the final song that you want to yeah. play for us. Room in my okay. heart. Room in my heart. This is a co-write with uh, the lovely Miss Bethany Rubin, who who also was on the team that uh, that wrote uh, "Me Without You." Awesome. So, yeah, Jillian. So this can is I a say? Co-write with her. Can I say it was such a pleasure? Oh, Thank before you. before we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. Where can people learn more about you? Oh, uh, find me on Facebook, okay. Jillian Calkins. C A L K I N S. Yes, that's my last name. All right. Also, I'm all over YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, so uh, you'll find me. She's all over it. All all over I'm it. on that. Thank you again for yeah. coming down to the Dusty Futon. And this is Room in My Heart. Yes. The ceiling is high and the lights are low The record is playing something slow Here in the room in my heart There's plenty of space and I'm here alone There's somebody else had to move on from here In the room in my heart 
Now I want to fill it with memories and stories to fill the books on the shelf. And it will be the place just for you and me. Until then, I'm okay by myself. Our hips will sway and we'll dance all night Here in the room in my heart I close my eyes and I can see Our shadows as they dance on the wall And this will be the place just for you and me Together we're so good here by ourselves In the room, in my heart Oh, the room, in my heart And One day we'll look at our memories Read stories from the books on the shelf And this is our place just for you and me Stay in the room in my heart. And that's where we will stay. <sighs> Thank you. Nice little coffee table, maybe some coasters on it, some doilies, yes. maybe a nice lampshade over in the corner so it's nice and dim. <laughs> I always like that lyric, <laughs> table for two. Mm-hmm. It shows up in some of the most very candid, uh, you know, metaphoric uh, poetry yeah. as far as that, you know, just sharing yeah. a, a nice little something or other. I, you know, I'm getting very simple. quiet it's, and it's jazzy. Like one of, one of I those gotta, simple things that it is you know, so simple. people enjoy. When Simplistic. you started scatting, mm. yeah. I, I just, my, I lit up because. <laughs> very ragtime scatting well, too. Well, scatting, oh, thank you. Uh, uh, scatting the <laughs> right way is hard to do. Mm-hmm. It truly is. I mean, I can kind of scat a little bit when I do some crooning, like when I sing, mm. but y- y- you just flew right into it. Like. Oh, Never yes. tried. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it would sound like Steven Tyler, though. Yeah. <laughs> With you, yeah. <laughs>